is the UKIP London Assembly member, uh, David Curtin. Um, David Curtin, is the party over? Certainly not over. Um, it obviously was a bit of a difficult night for us, but that comes off the yeah. uh, back of a difficult few months as well. But uh, it is better, I think, than, than what it could have been. Uh, well, we could have we, lost we, all of we them. We could have only lost you know, 117 out of 120. I mean, certainly in the local elections last year in 2017, we had about the same number of seats yeah. going into the election. We won one in 2017. Here we got three. Derby was actually a very bright spot. We uh, retained a seat that we had before and we unseated seated the leader of the, the Labour group in the council, yeah. as you said. And, uh, you know, we, there has been a bit of analysis done on the vote share that we have in the seats that we stood, and uh, that comes out at 7 to 8 per cent. So where uh, we stood, it wasn't so bad. I mean, it should be said you stood in far fewer uh, mm -hmm. seats than you, you stood in last time round. Mm. But at the same time, it, you know, all the analysis suggests that basically your vote has gone to the Conservatives. Well, in, in this time it has, and I think it, this is the vagary of the first-past-the-post system. I mean, in 2014, when these elections were fought the last time, there was the European Parliament election on the same night. And in that system, the proportional system, UKIP actually won. You know, we picked up a third of the seats in the European Parliament. But on, on this, uh, yeah. you know, these local council elections, we only got 4% yeah, of the seats. I mean, you, it's, you know, it's the system. Next year, you're going to lose your seats in the European Parliament because mm -hmm. Britain is no longer a member of the European Union. And a lot of people would simply say, job done. Look, UKIP was there. It was a very successful insurgent force which forced a referendum and Britain voted as UKIP mm -hmm. wanted to leave the European Union. Actually, there's nothing more for you to say. Well, certainly the first part of our job is done, to, to win the right to have a referendum, to have the referendum and to win the referendum. But now we're in this uh, long, drawn-out negotiating period. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a very clean Brexit, not a full Brexit, perhaps. I, mean, I don't know what kind of deal Theresa May is going to put together with the negotiators in the EU. But if that all goes wrong and if people don't get the Brexit that they want, then UKIP still has great purpose. So the job is not well, done and uh, we still have uh, uh, you know great chance yeah, to, to except, do better in the elections you know, next time except people know uh, the negotiations aren't going very well mm. and they still decided not to back UKIP so they they don't seem to mm. want that reassurance they seem to say decisions been taken let the government get on and work it out well, you've got to bear in mind that these are local elections as well, so people vote in these yeah. for a variety of yeah, different reasons. Yeah, but you reasons. don't have any MPs, yeah. so it's all you've got. I mean, all you've got mm. is the European Parliament and local councils. Well, this is an indication, but, you know, not everybody votes on the national issues in local elections. Yeah. Some people do. Um, you know, people who... Yeah. Uh, with the two-party system, you think there's a lot of people, I think, who would vote yeah. for UKIP, but are terrified of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, yeah. and Labour and, and the way they're going and therefore vote yeah. uh, for the Conservatives. So but, that has affected I us. I mean, one of your colleagues has been on uh, mm -hmm. the airwaves comparing UKIP to the Black Death. Well, I mean, th that's not a metaphor that I, I thought of myself. But, I mean, certainly... Well, what does um, it mean? I mean <laughs> well, I mean, certainly... Not good news, most people We've, would think, we've had yeah. a difficult time. Uh, we, uh, there's no question about that over the last year or so. But, you know, what we, what we have now is we put in place 554 candidates for these local elections uh, after, you know, the, 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 we were in a very difficult uh, position in February and March. To come back from yeah. that, where we had uh, nothing in place, to put that uh, number yeah. of candidates together, to get 8% yeah. nearly of the vote where I mean, we stood, I, mean, uh, I think that is quite a good achievement in a couple of months. Well, we haven't broken down the others, but I, mm. I suspect they're probably probably more monster-raving loony councillors than there are UKIP councillors. So. Um, I'm not sure about the monster-raving loony. I don't think they're, they're actually standing. But I mean, we are still uh, you know, a, a serious uh, political party. Are you? Absolutely. We are here for Brexit and beyond. You know, we we have certainly uh, got to be on the pitch, and we're still on the pitch. And I think uh, when we come to next year, things can be very, very difficult. Um, di different. I mean, a, a week is well, a lot. in the uh, standing uh, European in, elections, in, which aren't going to happen. Not in the European elections. I mean, right. the, obviously, we, we fought to, to come out of yeah. the European ele uh, Union, so there will be local uh, elections mm -hmm. next year. And I think there are local issues that people do resonate with UKIP on, particularly protecting the green belt, protecting the countryside, and uh, making sure that our mm -hmm. local services uh, work well and, and, and using the money uh, that we have wisely. To... Well, do you have any money? I mean, is the party actually? I'm talking. I'm talking about the the, yeah. the national money in the treasury oh, right. rather than the. No, the 
party's money. But as far but... as the party finances are concerned, are, is it still viable? Well, of course. I mean, uh, that, that's what I was saying. It was very, very difficult uh, for us in, yeah. in January, February, March. Yeah. Um, with the new leader we have, Gerard Batten, yeah. he's done a great job in fundraising for the party. We're now on a sound financial yeah. footing. And so that gives yeah. us the foundations, you know, for the 500 candidates we've got now and the many more candidates we'll have next but year. But he will be gone by next year, right? He said he's going to stand down at the end of this year. He, he said that he will, he will stand down. There will be another leadership contest uh, in a year's time. So uh, that will probably, the results of that, uh, that will play out after the local elections 2019, I imagine. Thank you very much, Lee, for joining You're us. Welcome.